And in this second episode, we're gonna talk about roundology. War room, baby, yeah! It's a place for winners. Hi, I'm Thomas Holbert. This is NBA War Room. What is roundology? Roundology is like the zodiac for business school. The stars. What round should I choose that will best match my personality? Actually, people worry about this all the time. They ask me, Thomas, what round should I apply in? Does it make a difference? Shouldn't you apply when you're ready? The fact is you can apply in almost any round, but they, all these rounds have certain characteristics that you should be aware of. People say, I've got to apply in round one because there's less competition. Well, guess what? Everybody's thinking the same thing. They're thinking, I have to be early. I have to do great. It could even be more competitive. Every school, every year, it's different. We don't know what you're going to get. To think that a certain round is going to make all the difference in your application is not really going to work. What you got to do is you got to work on your profile. Round one doesn't work if you're not prepared. It doesn't matter if it's early or not. You've got to be prepared. They say that round two, just for losers. That's not true at all. Round two typically is uh, the round where people are putting a little bit more effort into uh, applications because they think they missed the first round. This is a good time to talk about 40, 40, 20. What is 40, 40, 20? 40, 40, 20 is the approximate ratio in which schools admit candidates. 40% of their class in the first round, or roughly 40% of their class in the second round, and 20% of the class in the third round. So the third round is the tail end here. What kind of composition do they have? Each round has its own composition that mirrors the entire MBA application process. So there's going to be consultants and bankers and investment guys in the first round, in the second round, in the third round. They're going to be in all rounds. They're going to have their the little pyramid there. Each round is going to have its poets and their quants. It's going to have the scientific guys on the front end, and it's going to have the journalists on the far end. So there's space for everybody. One of the great things about the second round is you can set up a double profile. What is a double profile? A double profile is something that you probably have already. Are you a consultant? Yes, I'm a consultant, but I also play sports. Possible double profile. Are you an entrepreneur and an investment banker? Are you the head of a charity foundation? And do you work in a bank? Double profile. Many people think the things that they do outside of work don't count. They can, they can count a lot. Some guy, he's been a professional Sambo guy. Since he was a teenager, he wins matches, he does well. How does this work? How does this become part of my profile? Does being a professional wrestler make you think? Think about life? Have a strategy for facing an opponent? Does it feed into your leadership strategy at work? Probably. When you show your profile to a school, they see that and they go, hmm, look at this guy. He manages his time, he takes care of stuff. He's doing stuff, that's interesting. Do you play guitar? Yeah, I do play guitar. In fact, I'm in a band. Okay, so your band isn't that great. You play at parties, you play at bars. Is it fun? Does it help you? Does it force you to organize your time? Probably. Are you the lead singer? Are you the drummer? Maybe the lead singer is someone who's the leader of the band. Maybe that's your leadership style. Are you the drummer? Maybe that means you're the anchor. You're the guy who keeps the beat. Why not? Are you the bass player? Maybe you have all this basic expression. Do you take care of animals? Do you work for a volunteer organization that takes care of animals? How does that help you in your communication with people? Dogs don't talk, cats don't talk, but you have to talk to people about animals. Maybe you have an extra sensitivity. That could be worth a lot in a school that's looking for profiles for people who are not just standard cookie cutter applicants. Are you an entrepreneur? A lot of people have side businesses, small ones, and they think, I'm not even gonna put this on my resume because I failed. But guess what? When you fail, sometimes that's a real educational experience, and it takes a lot to say, I failed,
but I'm going to do better next time. In fact, people might say, that guy's got guts. He tried to do something that was difficult. And maybe he didn't make it, but he's got an education from it. He's learned something from it. So it becomes valuable. Don't hide the stuff you have if it's great. We're getting ready, the third round. Oh my God, I've got to do it. I've got to apply this year. Oh my God, it's the only time I have left. My God! Ah! Third round is for astronauts. What's an astronaut? An astronaut is a guy who goes into space. Well, yeah, yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, you didn't do that. That's why it's for astronauts. Are you the son or daughter of a famous person, a movie star? No, you're not an astronaut. Did you cure cancer when you were seven? No, you're not an astronaut. Olympic gold winner? No. If you're not an astronaut, don't worry. You can still apply in the third round. You don't have very good chances. In the third round, most schools are looking for what's called replacement candidates. So a lot of people have already been admitted and they want to be leaving. They're going to be searching for another school and they're going to say, thanks, but no thanks. And their place is going to become open. So in the third round, this is where they take this extra 20%. Some famous kids and some ordinary guys who have good profiles that are suitable to fill the places of those who have decided not to go to that school. Is it a slim chance? Yes, it's a slim chance. But if you're prepared, it's better than being desperate in the second round, for example. And that's episode two for the war round. Come back soon, get more tips and tactics for your uh, war against NBA. And subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to Fless because Fless is bringing you this great content. And you like it, don't you? I know you do.